What's up blockheads? We are here at Seminole Harley-Davidson and we're continuing work on Goldzilla, my 2020 Harley-Davidson Softail Lowrider S with the Stage 4 131. Today's episode is brought to you guys in part by SNS. You guys know SNS? Proven SNS performance. And we've got a good amount of parts to beef up the bike a bit, as well as trying a new part that's gonna impact it quite a bit. And that is camshaft kit chain drive 590c so this is uh as of us filming this not released yet but whenever i post this up it should be available so you guys be sure to check out the link down in the description below if you're interested in scooping up the 590 cam from sns on that note big thanks to sns for uh, working with us on this one really appreciate it and we're really stoked to be getting some more sns parts on the bike to uh you know really make it bulletproof in addition to the cam we do have tappet cuffs anti-rotation we also have a rocker arm stud kit and we do have the rocker arm set rollers as well joining me as per usual in the shop what chris is happening? we've got chris sick wide glide instagram right there you guys be sure to go give him a follow yeah i was just kind of talking explaining like what we're doing uh getting what the 590 obviously you're you're a little more a lot more tech than i am so if you want to kind of uh you're walking around with this cam in your hand like I that's a, i don't know if you guys noticed he just walked up with this thing it's been walking around this the shop impressive look at that low that's ridiculous here's a stock one for comparison i think we can all see that Oh, for sure. This is huge. Even if you don't know what that means, you can see that they're different. Quite a bit. This means power. So whenever you took it out of the uh, out of the box there. Oh yeah, I was like, oh shit. Look at that Lego. Yeah, Lego. Okay. Lego blocks. We're gonna put in some roller rockers. We're gonna put in some collars. And we're going to put in some studs that our good friends at SNS sent us. Okay. And awesome. then we're going to throw it on the dyno. We're going to see how it comes out. I'm, I'm pretty certain we're going to have to tune through it. Because, uh, again, it's a brand new cam. We don't even know the timing on it yet. So as we do, we're going to put it in. We're going to make a pull. We're going to let you guys see the, the first pull. Uh, regardless of how the, the power comes out, even if it looks like shit. We're, we're going to make a pull see what, and go from there. As per usual with this series, Total Transparency, we're like showing you guys the entire process of uh, what happens step by step power numbers and all that stuff. Yeah, many people have been asking for a new bump stick. So yeah. this is our new bump stick. Yep. It's almost square. It's pretty <laughs> close to square. It's not even kind of bumps anymore. That's, that's almost a block. Also, as per those of you out there that really appreciate that tech appreciation and you were asking if Chris measured the run out in a previous video. So he told me to get here early today because... We can't do this on a warm engine. Yeah. As an engine warms, it grows. Clearances shrink that makes sense so we'll measure run out for you guys just so you can see it see the process and uh, know where his engine's at right now so he told me to get here early because you know we're talking about those clearances and uh he's like we got to cool down the engine before we start working on it so typically we let the engine sit overnight and we do this out the following morning uh for the sake of this video and for what we're doing today we can't wait quite that long um but we're going to bring the core down to an acceptable ambient air temperature before we we set push rod Alright, so what is the purpose of uh, these upgrades? To make it badass. Badass. <laughs> Roller rockers, less friction. These also are stronger than stock, considering we're going to be lifting really high and at a high RPM, high rate. Uh, we kind of want something in there durable that we we feel is stronger than, than say, stock. This is why it's called a roller rocker, if any of you guys have ever seen that. Once we take the stock ones out, we'll show you a comparison of the stock versus the roller rockers. We'll kind of explain that a little bit further when we're looking at it. Awesome. So we are working on the bike, and one of the Forever. things... Forever. One of the things that we have debated about, fixed versus adjustable push rods. Right now, we went with uh, the fixed push rods since uh, beforehand we had the, the top end pretty much apart. We were able to use the stock push rods with it. Solid push rods are Here's always going to be better than adjustable uh, if they're matched to the lift of the Oh, see, so yes, yeah, so you have, they to, have, have that. to be there. Oh, well, he heard oh, you on the phone earlier. Because <laughs> if not, then you're going to destroy the motor. Because I was going to shut you down. When, no, nah, no, 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 no. They have to be, they, they have to be so, set up for the cam. In theory, yeah, solid is always better. Okay, okay. there's no, there's no when argument. It's, when it's made for the, for the right, when it's cut to the right, right length, yes, 100%. Like, 
but there's no push rods come for this cam, so therefore... Oh, you have to use adjustable. That's, right. it, it, that, that's the nature of the beast then. So, I think we're good. I don't, I don't disagree with anything yet. Anything you say. See how so. peacefully? Now you can add the little kids cheer noise. Yay! Yay. Yeah. All right. We're all in agreement, I guess. Yeah. Not much of a debate, but no, there you go. You know what was about to happen. <laughs> Kacha! You need help there, but he's that's a, a master technician. A master master technician. Motorcycle. How many years experience does he have? Dude, 24. 24 years experience, master level Why technician. Do we do this every time. What? It's not it's not that you need my help, I just want to help. Yay! I guess it's lunchtime now, huh? Yep. What do we want to do for lunch today? I don't know, we're gonna figure it out. Should we consult Pretty Vinny? Pretty Vinny! What you want for lunch? Pretty Vinny! Vamos a comer, senor! So we want to change your Instagram name to Pretty Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Would your wife be cool with that? Pretty Vinny. Yeah. No. Uh, we'll get you all them followers like like sick white glad one hour later here we are again feels like deja vu doesn't it yeah and we'll be here again that's chris's work ethic uh, i said let's just do the cam and he said no if we're gonna do it let's do it right i just can't put a 590 cam in with stock uh rockers not when they've given us some nice roller rockers to go with and we could have for sake of filming just to get it in there but i don't know do it right or don't do it. And that's what you call having principles. Is that what they <laughs> Yeah. I had one of those in school. Yeah. I didn't like them. No? Yeah. Pivot. Pivot! Here we go, pivot! Pivot! <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'm this every time. Huh? Like 19. Yeah. And then the 131 on top of that. Okay. So don't even. All right. Upper rocker box covers are off. Just pulled out the push rods that for some reason Chris wants to cut so badly. <laughs> We're not cutting because there's no reason to. It's wasteful. Eric's thinking about getting a new bike. Amy might be in trouble. We'll see. More, more jeans are rocker arm studs. They're studs. <laughs> Our good friend at Ashton S said uh, on some of their builds they were having the threads getting pulled out of the towers. So these are the stock bolts. We are replacing stock bolts with studs. And then on those studs go these crown nuts. Have you ever woken up when you're just dead asleep for no real reason, but you just wake up and you're like, you don't know why? It's usually you wake up to the sound of your motorcycle rusting. That's usually what causes that. What? <laughs> I don't know. It's a bad joke. Yeah, because we live in Florida. So that's what wakes me up and tendonitis. <laughs> tendonitis. Tendonitis. There are many things that wake me up, especially my kid when someone's knocking at the door at 6.30 in the morning. What? What is this part called? The shaft, the wrapper shaft. What makes the S&S ones better? Let's compare. So you tell me which one feels more solid. So, I mean, these do have the, the rollers. Yeah, and these have padded feet. These rock on top of the the valve itself that's the face of the valve, valve head so roller rockers spin on this it's less friction um less wear in okay. essence yeah this if you look at the foot we don't have that many miles on it but see the shiny spot already yeah obviously they're they're fine right now but in time that'll wear in that'll flatten out and it will actually change the opening of your valve hmm. it will open up a little bit less because material's been eaten up. Now this is microscopic, we're talking hundreds of thousands, but over time, long period of time, that can cause an adverse effect. So roller rockers apparently handle higher RPM, less stress, and don't break as easy. SNS tells us they're better, so we're gonna go with that for now. Link in description Here below. We didn't even, uh... Yeah, What do you call them after we eat? We get the, uh, the what? The itis? The itis. The itis. Look at that. Some people out there feel that roller rockers are less reliable because they can break. It's another part, yeah. Right. It's another moving part. Anytime there's more moving parts, you have potential for more breakage. Anybody that feels that way, you are excluded from this video because that is not important right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're using roller rockers because we, we believe and feel that it's gonna be better and better, more beneficial for you, especially considering we're building this pretty nasty. So yeah. Keep that in mind, this is all in stages. 
We can't give away everything at once, so we have an end result that we're after. Um, so stay tuned and we'll, over time, we will reach that goal and explain that goal further. But for now, you're in the dark. The whole purpose of the stud is to keep from having to put bolts in and out of the threads that are in here. It's basically to save the threads that are in the towers. Okay. That way, from now on, all we're gonna do is take off this nut and pull this out instead of unscrewing the whole thing out of here. Future wear and tear prevention. Correct. And since on an important part. <laughs> we're gonna be doing this a couple times over. It's always good to have something in there that we don't have to worry about. Right. The more you know. And now, the doctor opens the insides. Oh, wow. That's what she says. It <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> Danny! Danny, come here for two seconds. <laughs> so block left, because like... So, this is, this is awesome. Danny, watch. What block is, is right here working on he's brakes. On, he's not here right now. <laughs> what is your routine when you get home? What do you do, Danny? <laughs> what do you do? No, no, what's your routine? I love this daily routine. Oh, hey, kick the pants off, <laughs> throw them on the couch, grab a beer. <laughs> and do what? Walk around in my underwear and drink a beer. Do you check your mailbox in your underwear? I have. Nice. I have taken the All right, Danny. <laughs> cool. <laughs> done, I've done that too, right? I tell, I tell them every day, we just, I go, when you get by your, the window where your neighbors can see it, just give them the one too. What? Twig and berry dance. <laughs> Twig and berry dance. Demonetized. Oh what you doing God. on your vlog? Yeah, now I'm gonna turn it off now. I just hit the button again, right? Yep. What's that? That's cam chain what, tensioner. Cam chain tensioner? Thank you, Blockhead. That's what puts pressure on your cam chain. And it's fed oil pressure. See that little tiny hole? That's the oil pressure Word. comes through. It goes into the back of this guy, which in turn pushes on this little piston, which causes this to push outward against that chain. Word. See how that works in conjunction with each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As these go up and down, all this moves. The bump stick that we like right. to call it goes up and down. So pretty. I'm just doing stuff, man. So you mean another internet, uh, troll. internet troll, gangster? Troll. Troll boy. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was a negative comment. You guys should have let me loose. No. No. Ten seconds of bullshit ain't worth thinking about ruining the rest of your day. That's it. People that are doing better than you don't leave comments like that. Word. That's so sweet, isn't it? So is that like how you prime stuff? Was that how yeah, you pretty you know? much. After we've taken it apart and we reassemble, we'll do the same. Sure. We'll prime it. Wow. Look how pretty blue that is. Bro. Here's your 517 cam. Yee <laughs> yee! Screaming Eagle Harley Davidson. So it doesn't have too many miles on it. Doesn't look too bad. So what we're eyeballing here is where surfaces. This is where the cam, where the, the bearing rides on the right. Up this in inner bearing rides on the cam. Up in there. This is where the lifter wheels roll on the cam. Mm -hmm. And as the cam reaches its peak and it rolls this sometimes it'll literally jump it'll fall off depending on how big the cam is right or how the uh lobes are and we're just i'm just looking for even normal wear anything abnormal or anything pitting like scratches or, gouges yeah, or whatever yeah, anything bad obviously that's going to give us a good indication that we need to go further so the lifters just stayed in there huh it's called stiction stiction So one thing we're looking for right now is clearance. I, I'm oh, hitting no, something it's, there. Yeah. Was that the lifter wheel? Yeah, you're hitting the lifter. Okay. Yeah. So big. That's what she said. Do we have the clearance or no? We're good. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, S&S. Thank you, little nine pound, four ounce. Nine pound? Nine Jesus pound. was a big baby. <laughs> I don't know what your baby weighs. I always say seven pound, six ounce, baby seven Jesus pounds. laying in a manger all wrapped up in his swaddling. <laughs> Dear tiny Jesus, golden fleece diapers with your tiny little fat balled up fist pawing. He was a man. He had a beard. Look, I like the baby version the best. Do you hear me? I prefer to picture him like standing in front of a crowd like at a concert playing the electric guitar jamming out with Leonard yeah, Skinner. Let's give it right. <laughs> I have those in my bike too. Feels like plastic. It's Viton. Viton, <laughs> homie. Get it right. <gasps> What's under the hood? Plastic. What? Those are cool, man. Like, yeah. I, I got those. those are cool. If you don't hear the bass, I feel it. Yeah, that makes sense because, like, when your cam is spinning, and we talk about this a lot, now you can actually see it. This is where the, 
the lifters are, this is the cam. These are the bumps, right? So the bigger the cam, the longer the duration, meaning this stays up longer and goes higher. That's what we talk about when we're talking about lift and duration. For the short, for the layman, just refers to power, right? So if we had all this connected, which we don't right now, but just for visual sake, if there's a push rod in there and that moves up, we saw this earlier. I already put the covers on, but remember the rocker arms. This pushes up rockers. We've been over this a few times, but for those of you that maybe have never seen it or can't quite grasp what I'm telling you mentally, now you can see it visually. So it's kind of fun to do this. Like, wee, look. You want to do it? Go for it. It's your motorcycle. Wee. Eric, you want to do it? Come on, Eric. You know you want to do it. You know you want to. All right, get out in there. Oh, coyotes are us. How you doing, pumpkin? Okay, so when they're on overlap, right? That's, that's at the base circle. That's at the top dead center. Overlap is at the top. Okay, and so right, right there. This would be overlap. I'm not sure how much, if any overlap is on this cam. I'm sure there's some. So these are at the base, uh, base circle, meaning like that's the, the lowest the point. Right, this is on the base. So that's when I would take, that's when I would adjust my push rods. Correct. So I wait for overlap over here. You see, there's, oh, keep going back up a little bit. There's your overlap right in here. Right. At some point, both valves will be partially open. They may right. not be open all the way and they won't because they'll hit, but these aren't moving, so then I would adjust these. This, this these point. are going to get adjusted right. both right here. Right. And then we're going to rotate it around until both of these are at the bottom, and then we'll adjust those. Which would be right there. Yep. That was now. confusing for me, but now that I see it, ah yeah. man. Yeah. I love That's why you. why we do this. I, I like you. I like hey, you a lot. Somebody loves me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well that's cool. That's some edumacation right there for you adjustable using push rod users. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, what he said. I need to go redo the ones on my Evo. But no, no, that's something I saw. All right, Chris. So what is the benefit of these uh, anti-rotation tappet cuffs from SNS? Well, let's look. Considering this is plastic and this is aluminum, does plastic work? Considering I can like make this move with my fingers, <laughs> I can't make this move. No? No. So obviously the uh, the benefit of it is this this has no flex, so it's not gonna move or like uh, lose those uh, tolerances. Remember how with the plastic ones that rear was real tough to turn? No resistance, okay. Right, so now we're gonna measure run out here in a second. So this part last time around, I don't think we went over, but some people did talk about it and ask about it. Well, there were questions about why we didn't use gear drive. And then of course, with that question came, well, what was the run out? We didn't film it. I mean, we weren't filming a lot of things that first one so what is what is run out it's a deflection of your flywheel um how much it moves this way and how much it moves this way we're not exactly measuring this right now we're measuring this which is called deflection run out is technically this way we'll take another measurement to do that we're gonna start on zero so what do we have how many ticks did that move looks like five Yep. yep. So we're a total of 5,000 within range for what we're doing. And no, we're not using gear drive, so we are most definitely within range. What is range between what and what? Okay. Anything from 0 to 12. Now, that's with it in the case, obviously, and bolted up. That's with the uh, compensator torque to spec. If we had it out in a truing stand, it would be 5,000. And the end play, which we haven't measured yet, is 13. So if you figure 12 is your limit, you're safe, no matter what. This way and this way. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. This, this is support. called a cam support plate because you're right, right it supports Supported the end it. of okay. the flywheel right here. Cool. And the pump, the oil pump is going to ride on these flats. That's another reason why it's good to run one of these billet units, right? Because it adds rigidity to the case. I mean, I would assume. No, no, I mean. I sounded it, it, smart. It, hey, anything <laughs> no. forged is right. better than cast. True, true. So, All right, so. Notice they stay up. Yeah. It's just it's tension outward on pressure. That's how we did it when I was younger. We didn't have these fancy things. Back in my day. Yeah. Is that a screaming eagle? Back in my day. All right, Grandpa, time to go to bed. As a matter of fact, this is. Let's get our roll. All right, pump a plate in. It's like when I have my uh, my sourdough in the morning with butter. It's so buttery smooth and yummy. <laughs> now I'm hungry again. This is wanting material right here. I'm trying to walk away with some money. 
That's right. We're adjusting push rods. Awesome. So we're going with adjustable push rods. Yeah. Right now. And for those of you that haven't seen adjustable push rods, they adjust mm -hmm. like one would think. Length gets longer or shorter as need be. Yep. The reason we use these is for cams that are have a different grind or a smaller base circle, a larger base circle, or what have you. It allows it to fit without having them custom made. So we got the adjustable push rods in, we got the push rod tubes on, tappet covers all on, all that good stuff. I like how you're filming me, but not even like <laughs> the orange set didn't get paint on the helm. Oh. Gonna set it to zero. Pull the hose down first. Yeah, I got it. Thanks, Dad. Yep. One, two, three. Well, stop, no. Maybe one more. Just a little. Perfect. Everything I do is perfect. Of course. That's why I dress so well. My name is Chris. <laughs> Fresh engine work. Warm up. Warm up. Circulate oil. We always gotta let our engine warm up regardless. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. I can't wait to get your impression on this after uh, you take it for a rip. Later. Woo! Dude. Thoughts? Impressions? Super fun. We'll have, definitely have to. We'll need to map it. We'll need to build a map for it. Yeah. But any flat spots? For, uh, a little bit. Yeah, 25. Right about 2,500. Uh, sustaining, which I didn't get a whole lot of that, but on the I4, you know, it's backed up. Sorry, right. it's right about 25. It wants to like, like it's ready to go. But right, right. It's not quite there, which is to be expected. We'll make a pull real quick. We'll see what it looks like, and yep. that'll tell us where we need to tune. Later. I have been riding the bike a little bit so that we can kind of get some auto tune going. However, there's not that many miles on it. So we're going to go ahead and do some pulls, see what kind of power numbers we get out of this thing, and then that'll be the episode. One thing we did notice last time around was that the uh, air cleaner was kind of robbing us of some power. So SNS is actually sending us like an extended filter one to get more air into the engine. So we're going to go ahead and run it without. Let's go ahead and get some poles and see what this uh, 590 is going to do. And if anybody noticed that I changed shirts, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's all about the merch. Get it? I don't even know. What's the website? Insert the website. Blockheadmoto.com. There you go. Yeah, if you guys want to scoop up uh, this shirt, Chris likes it a lot because that's the engine that he has. Evo. Oh. Right? So that's why it was the shirt was made. The blockhead engine on the front. You've got the little RSSV cross piston on the left and then blockhead moto on the back. This is a raw run, meaning it hasn't been tuned. Yeah. We, we just put the, the uh, cam in with the Thunder Max to see what we get, so we know where to go to, to have a baseline of where to tune and what to tune. So this is showing basically what Thunder Max can do kind of out the box when combined with a new cam. We'll see how it does. An auto tuner that we just threw a cam in with no tune, it is not bad at all. Obviously we have some slight dip. We can definitely bring these numbers up significantly. Uh, it's gonna require some tuning, but for out of the box, auto tune, that is not a bad looking number. And your AFR line's smooth. That's not, not a bad number. Yeah, that's awesome for just dropping it in and- For just dropping it in and, and turning it on and going. Yeah. That's, uh, it's actually a, surprisingly impressive. 
Uh, it's a testament to Thunder Max. It is. Right? Yeah. Their, their base tune is for a fueling 521 cam. Um, and this is an SNS 590 cam that as of today is not even out. It's not bad. Good job, Thunder it Max. It can definitely be better for sure. But again, out of the box, not bad. Not nope. bad at all. Now it's on to tune. On to tune, the, the fine tuning. As usual, we're showing you guys the entire process, the step-by-step. -step. Um, if you're going this kind of same route, those are the numbers that you're gonna kind of see if you just drop in a cam and you don't tune it. Somebody was asking me in the comments and they said, if we if you do a cam in the bike should you tune it and i said Every yes time. absolutely yes because you're not getting the full potential or performance out of that cam by just dropping it in and you also don't know what it looks like yeah you know you don't know where your dips are your valleys are you don't know where your afr is set you don't know anything um other than it seems to go down the road right or it doesn't yeah you i would highly recommend tuning and that's i guess where we'll continue we have a lot of tuning to do here and then we'll have some we got tuning to do throughout but once we fix this part this is going to look better it's going to smooth some of this out and then we're going to fix this in just so you guys know i do read the comments somebody recently said that you can't tune this out the only way to change that and get that out is to change your exhaust it can be tuned out it uh there is some exhaust play for sure definitely this low spot can be fixed and probably be flattened and so it won't dip instead it'll flatten and then but yeah so two into one is is a troublesome thing to tune you always tend to have some dip i'm impressed again i think we've said this a couple times but for not tuned out of the box that's pretty clean and then on the on the interstate you got to be up around 35 yeah you got to be like high four. threes which yeah. is exactly is where, right where you, you know you kind of mm, this yeah. is you feel it here you start to feel it here and then your horsepower this as you if you were out there screwing around and 5500 that's where you're in that horsepower definitely a higher higher end rpm cam as a heads up we're gonna have some new fun with that uh, 6500 red line now but there you go guys first thoughts impressions with installing the 590 cam from sns big thanks once again to sns for uh sending out the cam as well as collaborating with us and sending out the other parts like the uh, roller rockers tap of colors any of the sns stuff that we used links down in the description below as well. So big thanks once again to SNS. Appreciate you guys. We've got more surprises incoming and on the way, continuing the journey of uh, making Goldzilla a monster. So you know what? You should just stop messing around with it and write it. I do write it. I've got like almost a thousand miles on this engine. <laughs> we're just messing around with it as we're. I'm riding it and then we mess with it and then we ride it some more and then we mess with it. Yeah, I write it. Well, he rides it sometimes too. And then I let Eric ride it. I think that's it so far. You, me, and Eric. I want Mike to get on it. Yeah. yeah. Shade Tree. Oh, yeah. Shade Tree's definitely going to ride it. Yeah. Well, Shade Tree and I, we're going to swap bikes once we do the uh, Road King Kong versus Godzilla thing. So, for sure. Anyways, guys, hopefully this uh, these episodes are continuing to be educational to you all. I'm continuing to learn uh, an absolute ton and uh, noticing the differences, like, actually on the bike between, like, the different cams from the stock cam that was in it to the stage four and the 517 and now the 590 from sns uh it's it's crazy how how much you can like dial in what style of riding you want with with these components and a cam is like it makes a big difference so like i know like the 590 cam probably not so much for me because it's going to be more of a race cam but we're going to still i'm still going to ride with it for a while going to kind of get acclimated to it and then we're probably gonna change it up a little more just to continue to educate y'all. Future episode stuff. As always, big thanks to Chris. Greatly appreciate you, man. You guys be sure to go give him a follow at Sick Wide Glide. I always wanna say Chris Wide Glide, but it's Sick Wide Glide. I'll drop the link down in the description below. If you guys enjoyed the episode, be sure to hit the like button. Hitting that thumbs up helps out the channel quite a bit. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. Hit the bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activities. Until next time, ride safe, stay vigilant. Catch you guys on the next one. Deuce. All right. Peace. Deuce. What's happening out there? You hear that? All right, later. I like when this started. It was like, yeah, we're just going to see, like, with when we bolt this on, what we're going to get, like, so we can show them what kind of horsepower. Now we're like, ah, we need bigger. This is shit coming. We just can't talk about it yet. So we're going we're gonna to let Mike take it for a rip, see what he thinks.
stuff is a whole other animal. It's not real happy below three grand, but that back stretch out there, holy <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get out of third gear. I looked down, I was like a buck ten in third gear going down that back. Mexico, we filmed this in Mexico. Circuit uh, racetrack. <laughs> It's like a cannon, yeah. remember? Oh yeah, yeah. After three grand. Yeah, that thing like That'll eat a leader bike. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, there's no, like you can't argue with 140 foot pounds of torque. Like. Right. Coming from a guy who did metric tuning for years and years and years. Yep. Yeah, they don't make that kind of torque. My old sports set, I had a 1250 kit on it, high compression pistons, ported heads, uh, Andrews N9 cams, drag pipes, and I would eat my roommate's uh, Gixxer. He had a GSXR 600 nice. all day long. Uh, <laughs> on a sportster. Oh, dude, about up to about 120, and then 120, he could just start fading on me. Yeah. But up to a buck 20. It was originally an 883, mm -hmm. uh, and I like never painted the motor. I left it gray. That bike didn't have a kickstand. I just leaned it up against <laughs> like the tank was all <laughs> dented and crap. And we were riding with some guys uh, down in Coco. This one dude, he had done a 95 inch kit, a bunch of cams and head work. And we leave out in the first gear, pull the wheel, second gear, pull the wheel, third gear, she comes up. We get to the next bar and he was like, you just pull a third gear wheelie? And I was like, yep. And he's like, oh, what'd you do to that thing? I'm like, nothing, man, it's just an 883, dude. <laughs> and he's like, oh, pull I'm like, nah, 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 man, it's a sportster. It's just fast, you know? And he's, he was so pissed. He's like, I just spent five grand on my motor and that thing just Smoke <laughs> like, yeah, it's white, you know, do some weight there.